on today's video, I want to talk to you about tri-tip, tell you how I cook it, give you some tips and tricks so you can make a perfect tri-tip. First, let's put on our gloves here. I always use Clean Space Projects gloves. Uh, if you haven't tried them, these just, they don't pop on me, don't break on me. I love using them and everything I do. So about the tri-tip, we'll start here with this uh, prime tri-tip that I got from Costco. All right, what I wanna show you is there's two grains in a tri-tip, right? You see it? So this is more of a West Coast barbecue thing. Uh, kind of started it in uh, 1950, the tri-tips. I might be a little off on my history of the Santa Maria tri-tip, but most butchers across the country use this for hamburger meat. Uh, but really, this is an amazing cut of meat if treated properly and cooked properly. So that's what I'm here to do. I'm going to show you and talk to you about the tri-tip and, and how to cook it properly, how to prep it, how to season it, how I like to cook it. And then the key important is how do you cut it at the end? That's going to make a huge difference. And that's what we're going to talk about first. The tri-tip has two different grains. If you see, there's kind of a crease right here. Everything through here, the grains go this way, right? But if you look at the right here at the seam, the, the crease starts going this way, right? So... It's two cuts of meat. If you cut it, and I see it all the time, I cringe when I see it. People cut it like this all the way across. Well, guess what? You're going to be good most of the way, but when you get over here, man, that's just ruined meat. It's tough. You don't want to do it, okay? We're going to start off with some W sauce, right? So if you've never heard of Baron Burton's W sauce, you should check it out. It's more of a like a full-bodied Worcestershire sauce or wash your sister sauce. Right, as people who are saying around, but super great. I use it on anything and everything, but I'm gonna slather it on, right? Real like this, this nice little coat. As you can see, it's full bodied. I'm gonna lather it down, get it on both sides. Hmm. I can't tell you how good this smells. I love it on anything and everything especially beef all right we're going to keep it simple today as far as rubs go we're going to use our beef rub yeah it's kind of like an spg on crack salt pepper garlic base but it's got a lot of great flavors that i enjoy that i think work really well together a mix of some spanish and asian flavors so we're going to put this on i'm going to go pretty liberal with it you know it's a, a lot of flavor, but it's balanced nicely. A little windy out here today, so the rub kind of goes around. We're going to pat it in. You know, it's not a rub, so pat it in. You want to make sure you get all sides. All right. Finish seasoning it up. It's a nice coarse grain rub. All right, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna let that rest on the counter here. Uh, with beef, I like to let it come up to temperature, up to room temperature. So that way it's not as shocked as it's going on the grill. And speaking of grill, I'm gonna make it super easy. We're gonna show you how I do a reverse sear on the Weber kettle. I've got a lot of grills and smokers, but the Weber kettle was kind of my little trusty go-to. I cook on it all the time, probably more than any of my other cookers. I don't get paid by Weber either, by the way. So, hey, Weber, if you're out there. All right, let's get started. All right, when I'm cooking on my Weber kettle, I like to do a Tucson method. And an easy way is this s, &S pan here. It's called a slow and sear. You can pick them up online. And what it does is it gives me an indirect and a direct heat. So when I do a reverse sear, this is kind of how I set it up. All right. I like using Jealous Devil Lump Charcoal. I'm a big believer in Jealous Devil Lump Charcoal. As a veteran, uh, you know, American made is big to me. But when it comes to charcoal, I can differentiate between the difference in American made and just quality. So what I mean by that is... Uh, your best, some of your best hardwoods 
in the world come from South America or Southeast Asia. Well, and Jealous Devil's Lump Charcoal is made down in South America, and it's made by some of the best hardwoods in the world. So we're going to start off with some lump charcoal. What you notice is it's all chunks, right? You notice it's all chunks. There's no crumbs. You didn't see crumbs coming out of there. It's all quality lump charcoal. It doesn't feel like styrofoam when you pick it up. It actually feels like nice hardwood. All right, let's get this bad boy lighted up. I could use a chimney or whatever, but I don't want to waste no time. I'm going to try out my uh, nice little grill gun here. So let's get it started up. All right, those coals are already getting white. We're going to put the grill grate on and then uh, we're going to start getting this thing up to temp. Put the nice grill grate on. We'll, uh, once this gets hot enough, gets ready, we're going to uh, put a chunk of wood on there. And we're going to get ready to smoke. All right. Now I want to add some of Jealous Devil's smoke blocks to it. They make a whiskey barrel, a hickory, and a cherry. For this cook, I'm going to use their whiskey barrel. This stuff just puts off a nice aroma. A little bit goes away, a long ways. So we're going to put that on in here. One of the things I mentioned earlier... All right, something I mentioned earlier about having the meter here and the vent here. The reason is, is you want that smoke, when you put it on it, you want that smoke to roll over and come out, right? So you're going to have an intake here. It's going to come up and then roll out over the meat, right? So that's why you want it. If you had it over here, the smoke would just come straight out right here and would never touch your meat, all right? What I know with my Weber kettle, because I'm in tune with my Weber kettle, is when it's at 400 degrees over here, I know it's going to be right at about 200 to 225 in that range right here. So I'm going to be able to smoke it for about 45 minutes, and we're going to probe it. I'm looking for about 115 to 120. Then we're going to take the lid off. We're going to open up the vent so that hot gets that this area back here gets nice and hot, and we're able to sear it on both sides and just give you that beautiful crust before we let it rest and get into it. All right, let's go get that tri-tip. All right, we got that tri-tip. We're going to lay it on here just like so in that indirect area right there. Like I said, it's somewhere in the 200, 225 degree range. We're going to put that lid on it, start getting some nice of that whiskey barrel smoke going across it, kissing that meat. We're going to check back on it probably about 35, 40 minutes, check the temp, see where we are, and then see if we're ready to sear. All right, while the tri-tip's smoking, something I like to do is make some chimichurri. I just love chimichurri with tri-tip, and my good friend Al Fragoni has made it simple and easy for you. You know, there's nothing like a fresh chimichurri, but I tell you what, this dry form seasoning that Al Fragoni came up with is a game changer. I don't ever want to make fresh chimichurri because it's so good. The way it is, the way it works, is a one part chimichurri. So we're going to go with a quarter cup here. Boom. All right. Then one part red wine vinegar. Of course, all chimichurri is made with red wine vinegar, but this acts as a, a way to rehydrate it at the same time frame. So boom, we mix this up and you're gonna let it re rehydrate for about three to five minutes before you add, I say one part olive oil because I'm using it on meat on the jar, it says two-part olive oil, but when I'm putting it on meat directly, I use one part, one part, one part. So we're going to let this rehydrate here for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to add the olive oil. All right, that chimichurri mix has had a chance to rehydrate. Now we're going to add the one-part olive oil. All right, you just mix it up like so. And boom, you have instant chimichurri. You see that? It's so good, so perfect. It's going to taste really good on this tri-tip. 
All right, it's done. Now we're just waiting. We're gonna check on that tri-tip here shortly, see if it's ready to sear. All right, <clears throat> we got our temperatures that we were looking for. Now it's time to sear this bad boy off. All right, as you see, I have the indirect side and now I have the indirect direct side over here, right? So we're able to go directly on there. Boom, start searing. Man, smelling good with that whiskey barrel chunks. So what I did is I brought it up to 120. I've got some guests coming over here. If I'm cooking for myself, I bring it up to about 110, 115, because I like it more of a, a rare, but we're going for a more of a medium on this cook here. We're just going to sear it for uh, yeah, a minute, minute and a half or so on each side. Flip it. Get some nice char on there. Smelling good. Man, I can't wait to dig into this bad boy. All right, there you go. We got a perfectly seared tri-tip. Let's let it rest. I like to put aluminum foil just over the top like this for two reasons. A, I want to keep it from... I want to keep it from the temperatures coming down too quickly. At the same time frame, we're outside. I want to keep it nice and protected. No flies get on it. All right, we read, let this rest for 15, 20 minutes, and we're going to be ready to slice. All right, the tri-tip is rested. Take this aluminum full off. All right, like I talked about earlier, look how beautiful this tri-tip is here, by the way. Beautiful sear, still nice and hot. You'll see this seam. So that very first cut that I do, is I put it right there on that seam, right? Let's see how we cooked it. Oh yeah, she's beautiful. All right, so like I talked about, the tri-tip has two seams, right? So, uh, uh, grains, it has two grains. So the grains on this one goes like this, right? And the grains like this go like this, all right? All right, first thing we're gonna do Let's trim this bad boy up. I love using this cutting board so it has a drip hole right here, but here we go. You see it cuts like butter. All right, a good piece of tri-tip, if cut against the grain properly, is gonna pull right apart. See that? Absolutely perfect. Boom, all right, let's slice up some more. My buddies came over today, so they're looking forward to trying this. It was this little chimichurri, so we'll see what they have to say about the tri-tip. All right, now I'm going to show you this one right here against the grain, right? <clears throat> so here's the grains. They go right here. So what we're going to do is slice it up like this. Once again, it should just pull right apart perfectly like that. If you'd have cut with the grain, it'd be chewy as hell and it would be one just terrible bite. All right, we'll put this to a side. We're going to spread some chimichurri in and call my boys in. Come on in, guys. A little chimichurri. Like I said, I love tri-tip and chimichurri. Let's see what these guys think about it. All right, grab y'all a bite. I'm gonna grab a little bigger bite. Let's get at it. Yeah, that's good. That's chimichurri is good and all that. It's tender. Oh, mm. That's so tender. That's really good. That's really good. All right, guys, what do you think about tri-tip and chimichurri? Fantastic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You heard it here. <laughs> if you like this video, you like seeing more of this stuff, me cooking demonstrations on different cuts of meat. Hit the follow button, subscribe, mm -hmm. check it out. Oh, yeah.